David here with Figboot on Pens, back again with another video. Today I have for you the third in a series of top 10 lists. Over the last two weeks, we have taken a look at fountain pens under $50, and then there was the best in the $50 to $100 range. This list is going to take it up another notch and cover pens in the $100 to $250 price range. Uh, what are you going to start seeing in this range? You're going to start seeing some gold nibs. Uh, four of the pens in the top 10 here have gold nibs. And you're going to start to see a step up in quality and design and performance. Uh, one of the things I really like about the fountain pen hobby is that it can be enjoyed at every price point. This $100 to $250 range is one that a lot of users live in. There are several pens on this list which some folks consider to be their grail pens. A grail pen, I don't believe, uh, necessarily needs to be something super expensive and unobtainable. I think it's something more like a goal, a level that you'd like to obtain. Uh, there are some real quality pens in this range. So, to take a look at what I feel are the best options in this range, please join me over here at Camera 2. Okay, this is a really fun range, the $100 to $250 range. And to start off with, I had a few honorable mentions. Uh, to begin with, let's have the Pilot Custom 74. Uh, this is a nice gold nib. Um, it's kind of on the lower end of the pilots in regard to their gold nibs. Uh, there's a lot of variety in colors. You have some nice transparency in there so that you can see your ink situation. Um, and overall, it's just a nice quality pilot pen. Next up, we have a couple of pens from Penlux, and those would be the Penlux Delgado. Um, they've come out with a number of kind of nature theme pens from the Delgado. Uh, this one was themed after koi, and this one was themed after butterflies. Uh, they're really nice piston fillers. Um, they are distributed by the same company that distributes uh, Sailor here in the U.S. Uh, and they're just nice quality pens for this price. Uh, it's one of those things where if you don't have one in your collection to fill it out, uh, Penlocks has some uh, really nice offerings. Next up in the honorable mentions is the Montegrappa Elmo. Uh, this essentially is the entry-level Montegrappa pen. Um, I've always liked the nib stamping on Montegrappa pens. It's just unique. Um, and this just has a sleek, classic look to it. Um, it's available in a number of different colors. This one here, I believe, was an exclusive for Goulet pens. This one was the Chrissy Cola. I just really love the green resin on there. But the, the Montegrappa Elmo is a solid offering. And finally, in the honorable mentions, we have the Esterbrook SD. Um, this is just a, a really nice pen in this range. Uh, that they, they come out with a lot of different variety as far as different resins and different looks to it. Um, I have one I actually need to review sooner rather than later. Uh, and this one is in their larger size. You can, so you can kind of see the different size. There's difference between the two sizes. Uh, this one here actually has their flex nib on it. So you can tell here it's inked. I've been testing this one out. So uh, I need to get to this review sooner rather than later. But the Esterbrook SD is uh, well-deserved in this honorable mentions. Okay, on to the top 10. Uh, and in this price range, uh, you could start getting some custom pens from some really cool custom pen makers. Uh, and one of my high recommendations is something from the Carolina Pen Company. And here are three examples of the Charleston model right here. Uh, now, these are uh, custom resins that were made by Jonathan Brooks. Uh, and this one here was one that I ended up using. This, actually, these two were ones that Jonathan and I, and cre Jonathan and I created uh, when I went down to his studio and we made some resins. And if you haven't checked out that video, it's worth checking out if you'd like to see a master craftsman at work. Uh, and then this one here is his Earth Magic material, which I just absolutely adore. Uh, I like this one so much that I used a variation on this one for my very first pen project. But in that uh, 100 to 250 range, you could start getting some custom pens uh, and that uh, Carolina Pen Company is a good place to go for that. Next up, maybe isn't one pen, but just a designer and a company, uh, which is Ian Schoen from Schoen Design. And I have a number of his pens that uh, are very, very well done. This were some, a couple in his Ultim collection. Uh, this was a couple in his Pocket 6 line. These are really neat because these are small pocket pens, but yet they have a very nice number six nib in them. Uh, and they 
post very easily and turn into a very nicely sized pen. Uh, and the uh, and, and Ian is always very innovative. Uh, he is coming out with his own nib. If you check him out on Instagram, you can see the new nib that he designed. Uh, I've had a chance to test it out, and it is incredible. It's outstanding. It looks really unique, and it performs very nicely as well. Here's a couple of his other models. This, one, I believe, might have been my first one I picked up. No, I think this one, the Pocket 6 was my first, but this was one of the other first ones I picked up. I really like this. Uh, and then this one here was his uh, Peekaboo. Uh, even has a little ghost there on the back. But Shown Design has a number of models that are well worth checking out. Next up is a pen from Pilot, which was one of my first Pilot pens that I owned with a gold nib, uh, and that would be the Pilot Custom Heritage 92. Uh, this was my first uh, pen in their Custom Heritage lineup, uh, and I really enjoyed this pen. This is one that I got a lot of use out of, especially early in my pen journey. Um, I just think it has really cool, sleek looks, has a really nice piston filler, you can see the ink sloshing around in there, and has a really nice gold nib on top of that. So within this 100 to 250 price range uh, that the uh, Custom Heritage 92 has always been one of my favorites. Next up is a pen from Platinum, and that would be the 3776. Uh, this is basically their flagship brand, uh, and it comes in a number of different colors. This is the blue, uh, and you can see that nice nib there, and it has the nice heart breather hole, which is always unique. Uh, and this is the, is, I think it's cerulean red. I think it's cerulean red. Um, I always like the material on this one. It just has a little bit of pearlescence in there, uh, which is nice to see. Um, some of my favorite models of theirs, though, were their Lake series, and this was the Yamanaka. Um, this has some interesting wave on here. Uh, I just like this wave pattern a great deal. They had a whole series of uh, lake pens, and this is one that uh, I had purchased that I care for greatly. Coming in at number six on this list is a pen from Narwhal, and that would be the Nautilus. Um, this is was pretty much a step up for Narwhal. Uh, this is a pen that is either made out of uh, ebonite or it can be made out of resin, but it just has a different look and feel to it than the original Narwhal pens. Uh, if you'd like a look at those, they were on one of my previous top 10 lists. Um, and for this particular one, this is one of my favorites. I really like kind of this antiqued look to the trim on here. And the portholes are very distinctive in regard to being an ink window. Kind of have a nice nautical theme to it. Uh, and the nibs are very nice as well. Um, it is a piston filler, and it's available in a number of different varieties. Um, this one here was a Jonathan Brooks material, uh, and then this is a very nice ebonite, and then uh, there was another ebonite version here. Uh, and so this one was one that was available through Cult Pens that I recently reviewed, or somewhat recently reviewed. Uh, this material really kind of comes to life when the light hits it. But you can see in a variety of trim that this pen looks nice, and then on top of that, it performs very nicely as well. Next up is a pen from Franklin Kristoff, and that would be the Model 66. Um, this pen is very well loved. Um, I pretty much keep it inked up at all times, and that uh, it was one of my first eyedropper pens. You can see that it's been inked up for so long that it's rather stained, and it's one of those inks that, or one of those pens that um, I will just always use with the same ink, just because it, uh, the ink and this pen have become one. But one of the really neat things is that this pen comes in a wide variety of colors and sizes. And if you see Franklin Kristoff at a pen show, they uh, will always bring some unique versions of this pen that aren't available elsewhere. This blue one was a uh, unique version that was created at a sh or available at a show, which was nice. And I care for this model so much that on one of my last pen projects, I created this, which was the Model 66 out of the uh, uh, custom resin that Jonathan Brooks and I made. Uh, and when I say us, uh, that we made it together, it was pretty much uh, him making it and then uh, uh, me, uh, him doing 99% of the work and then me stirring and uh, 
uh, him making me feel like uh, I was participating. Like you have a, a little kid in the kitchen who really helped you cook dinner. That was me helping him make this resin. But it turned out really nice, uh, and I really enjoy this model of pen. It's a really neat, almost have as an old school desk pen feel to it. Um, really nice and long, and it is perfect to eyedropper. If you ever wanted to eyedropper a pen, it holds a ton of ink in here. Um, it does a good job of not drying up. Uh, unlike on my other model, I've, or other model I showed you, I just had that ink up literally for years and will continue inking it up and uh, it always works well. And Franklin Christoph has a lot of really cool offerings. Okay, four more to go. And coming in at number four, we have the Diplomat Arrow. Uh, this was a pen that I really enjoyed the nib on. The, uh, the Diplomat nib is something that's very distinctive. It's one of those nibs that if you blindfolded me and I could write with it, I mean, I, obviously you can kind of feel this is a very distinctive pen in the hand. But uh, if I could mask that, I could be able to tell this nib right away. It's just something very distinctive. Um, I like the stamping that's on that nib as well. I've liked this extended section. I've always loved the grooves. It has kind of a Zeppelin look to it. Uh, and over the last couple of years, they've come out with a wide variety of colors that have just really hit the mark. Um, I have a couple of them. This was my very first one, which was a black, which is very nice. Uh, but then I believe my second one I purchased up with this, or purchased was this orange. And this orange one actually has a gold nib on it. Uh, and believe it or not, when it comes to the Diplomat, at least this particular nib, I almost prefer, or I do prefer, the stainless steel nibs over this gold one. This gold one has a tendency to sing a little bit loudly. Uh, maybe it's just this individual one, but overall I really enjoy the uh, stainless steel nibs from Diplomat. And then this is something that's very similar, which is the Elox, which uh, rather than the uh, the grooves going sideways or the trenches, so to speak, there's the rings around the edge. And I just think that's another really cool look. And this one has a pop of color when you open it up. So between the Elox as well as the Arrow, I think these are outstanding offerings. Coming in at number three, we have one of my favorites. Obviously, if it's in the top three, it's one of my favorites. And that would be the Pilot Vanishing Point. Uh, this is an iconic pen. Uh, and that it can be a little bit polarizing. Uh, there's some people that really enjoy it and really love it. And then there's other people that feel like it doesn't necessarily feel like a true fountain pen. Because, you know, yes, you have to depress the knock in order to bring out the pen. Or bring out the nib. And it just kind of feels almost more like a ballpointer. You use it almost more like a ballpoint, but the nibs on these pens are outstanding. And some people don't like the clip being up here up top. Um, I find it helps me index the pen and align it really nicely. Uh, there are literally thousands, maybe, well, maybe thousands, hundreds and hundreds of different of colors uh, over of the uh, Pilot Vanishing Point. I have a friend that is one of, has one of the larger collections in the world, and there are just so many different limited edition colors that come out around the world world it's amazing um, I have one here in a gunmetal which I like uh, then there is the decimo which is kind of the smaller version of the vanishing point uh, and then this one is more expensive than this price range but I have one here with the Raiden water surface which is really nice with the Raiden in here so they have some that are more higher end uh, they have some with wood and other materials uh, but overall, the Pilot Vanishing Point is uh, well deserved of a place on this list. Coming in at number two is a company that hasn't been around for that many years, but quickly became one of my personal favorites, and that is a pen from Leonardo, and this is the Memento Zero. Uh, this one here is called the Blue Hawaii. Uh, there is a lot of different versions. Uh, this one here is a mango. I really like this color. I just think this color pops really nicely. And I liked it so much that I did a couple of projects of my own where we I came out with limited edition versions. Uh, this one here was the Carolina Midnight. 
uh, which I just really love this material from Jonathan Brooks. It just has some nice depth and pearlescence to it. Uh, and then this one was my very first one. Uh, this one is a take on Jonathan Brooks' Earth Magic material. You know what? Let me actually show you a comparison since I showed it earlier. This was the original Earth Magic material, and then this was our version. And uh, the reason why we did some change is because while I really loved this copper, I wanted, I really loved the turquoise and wanted it to be a little bit more consistent. And with this material, with this much turquoise, sometimes you're going to have pens that are more turquoise and some pens that are more um, uh, more copper and so I wanted a little bit more consistent so we eliminated some more of the copper and uh, made more of the uh, turquoise and that's what we ended up with so this was the inspiration that and since I like that material so much this is what we ended up with but the Memento Zero I just love the wheeled clip it has a very distinctive uh, kind of ergonomic section here that I find to be very comfortable it posts very nicely uh, the nibs right outstanding as well. Uh, overall, I just think it's a really quality pen. It is uh, uh, a cartridge converter pen and uh, that Leonardo has been a pen over the last, you know, probably four years, I guess they've been around, maybe a little bit longer. Um, I'm losing track of time, but um, I, that they've been had some outstanding offerings, offerings. And if you don't have a, a, a Memento Zero in your collection, it's well worth taking a look at. Okay, now we're down to the big kahuna, the number one, and that would be the venerable Lamy 2000. Um, this pen is just iconic. It is over 50 years old, but the it, it's really a timeless design. If you release this today, it would look modern, uh, which is just incredible. I just really love the Macrolon material. I really like the blocky clip. Um, there, the uh, section can be a little bit polarizing. There's some people that think it's a little bit, uh, I don't want to say slick because there, it does uh, have some brush to it, um, but they don't like just that it declines so quickly. It has a does have a nice ink window on here. This one here is like a double broad. It's a, just a really wet, juicy nib. Um, you really can't even see the transition to the piston knob here. It's done so well. It basically becomes invisible when you close it unless you really know what you're looking for. Um, it looks great in the hand. Uh, and like I mentioned, uh, even though this pen is 50 years old, not this specific one, but since the model is 50 years old, if it came out today, I think it would be just as popular. Um, I do have one in the uh, stainless steel as well. Um, you know, to be honest, I don't care for the stainless steel one as much. Um, it's just a bit more weighty. Uh, and uh, I, I kind of prefer the Macrolon version better, but they both are outstanding. And they've actually started coming out with some different colors of this. They've come out with a red. They've come out with a blue. They've come out with a brown. Uh, and uh, those have been a little bit more pricey. But this standard uh, uh, Lamy 2000 is very reasonably priced uh, and out and performs extremely well. So I think it's a, a very well deserved to be uh, the top of this list. So there you have my list of my top 10 pens in the $100 to $250 range. Um, look forward to next week where I'll be taking it up another notch and taking a look at pens in the $250 to $500 range. Uh, until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.